This program is sponsored by Imagine Theaters, Able Ideas, Comic City, and Echo Network. Welcome to another episode of Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi. I'm Jill. And I'm Nick, and we're going to get things started at Motor City Comic Con with Mark, who had a chance to interview Jack O'Halloran, who played the mute villain Nan in Superman 2. I'm here with the legendary actor Jack O'Halloran. You may know him as Nan from Superman and Superman 2. How you doing, sir? Very well, thanks. I know there's a lot of controversy that there was, you know, with Richard Donner and the Salkinds. Did you see any of that? Uh, you know? Yeah, you could feel the tension. You know, it was very sad. You know, because if Donner would have finished two, he would have done three, four, five, six. You know, because he was that much. He still does the comic book, Superman comic book, and it's it's just sad that they they so short sighted. Because if you ever did you see the Donner cut? Have you seen? The oh Donner yes, cut? yes. Much better than the Lester cut. Oh yeah. So what was it like working with Richard Donner? He's brilliant. Dick was, uh, Dick's wonderful, I loved it. When he asked me to do it, and he said, you know, how do you feel playing a mute? And I said, I relish the idea because Jackie Gleason was a friend of mine who did Gigo and won an Oscar playing a deaf, dumb mute. I said, if I ever get a chance to play a character like that, I'm gonna jump at it. And when you look at Superman, you know, Terrence was a vicious general, Sarah was a man-eater, somebody had to relate to the children. So I took this brutish guy and played him like a child. And it worked out very well. Another movie I want to ask you about was one of my favorites as a kid was the 1976 version of King Kong. What was it like working on that movie and the actors in it, like Charles Grodin and Jeff Bridges? You know, we had a great cast. We had a great script. The music was great. Terrible director. You know, it, it could have been a lot better. It, it, was, it was still a stand-up good movie. But, uh, and we had a, you know, we had a ball. You know, we, had, we had a lot of fun shooting. Jessie was brilliant. That was her first movie. And you, you knew she was a star the first day she came to work. I fell in love with her after that movie. She was, Jessie was brilliant. She's, and a super lady, really, really good person. Mr. O'Holland, it was a pleasure speaking with you and I hope you have a really terrific con. Thank nice you. to meet you. My pleasure, enjoy the show. This is Mark signing out with Nan. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. I always did wonder what he sounded like. What do we have next, Jill? Let's see what's new on TV this week with Q. This has been the Q from Comics Man Sci-Fi, and it's been one hell of a season. But I'm here to give you my last picks, so let's jump right into it. We got my old buddy, the Wayne Johnson, coming in with Ballers. The Rock plays a financial consultant to athletes, and with him being an athlete himself, I think he fits right into the role. I'm gonna do whatever I want, whenever I want. Do you feel me? We pumped a lot of our own money into this company. Do you feel me? It's for the money and the power. Yeah. Nobody go anywhere. We're going to war. And our next show slash TV movie is the last Sharknado. Hopefully. I'm gonna need a bigger chainsaw. Next show we're gonna talk about is Jack Ryan. And since every leading man in Hollywood is playing him, you might as well add another one to the slate. I work behind the desk. I write reports. That sounds... Boring. Dr. Ryan! I need you to come with me. What? We have to go. We gotta figure out a way to get inside his head. Musa bin Sleiman is my husband. He don't know where I am. My son is with him. Is he planning something here? Paris was only the beginning. Just follow along. Watch and learn. We have to chase this down. 
my son. Get him back. Promise me. I promise you, I'm the best chance you have. This has been the Q from Comics Me and Sci-Fi. Thanks for joining me for three years. You've been putting up with my face for two in the morning, and I know I just brighten up your night. Thanks, Q. Now it's time for our first commercial break. And we'll be right back with more comics, beer, and sci-fi. The magic of movies and more isn't just our tagline. We believe in its truth. A movie theater auditorium where wonderful stories unfold is a magical place. Whether a two-hour film, a three-hour epic, or merely the anticipation of viewing trailers, your every viewing experience is very important to us. Imagine's a pure Michigan company, founded and operated by Michigan natives. And moviegoers like you aren't just customers, you're our guests. So when it comes to moviegoing, we know you have a choice. And on behalf of our entire team, thank you for choosing Imagine. Welcome back to Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi. Let's go over to Samantha now with our video game segment. Hi guys, this is Samantha with Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi. Forget the movies, check these games out instead. Earlier this year, they came out with a Tomb Raider movie. Now they made a new game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I've come so far. game, World of Warcraft, also had a movie back in 2016. Now they have a new game, Battle of Azeroth. time. Thanks for sticking around. This has been Samantha with Comic Experience Sci-Fi. Happy gaming. This is the Q from Comic Experience Sci-Fi. We're here at the San Diego Comic Con, the big time. I'm here at the DC booth. You know, it's the only thing I care about. They got the Shazam costume from the movie. They got the Aquaman costume from the movie. It's phenomenal. It's blowing my mind. Let's go in here and check it out and see what else they got. My name is Beast Boy and I'm here to say I'm kicking it at DC, that's it how I play. Now I'm not just messing around, I'm green up in the town. San Diego Comic Con, yeah, it's going down. That's what's up, mama. Hey. That's right off the dome. They have uh, the new figures out for the DC the Animated Series, Batman the Animated Series, Justice League the Animated Series. They got a whole bunch of figures out here, man. It's very exciting. They got autograph signings going on for some of the best comic books. It's phenomenal. It's a lot of people. I've seen a lot of Superman. I've seen a lot of Batman. I haven't seen a Blue Beetle. I'm having a blast here at the San Diego Comic Con. It's not bad for my first time. I'm going to check out some more DC stuff. Hopefully I can get Christian Bale's autograph. 
Thank you very much for that. What do we have next, Jill? Well, we're going to go to Mark and see what's new in the movies this week. Coming out this week is a new Mark Wahlberg film, and thankfully it's not the Transformers. Wahlberg reteams with director Peter Berg in this action thriller, Mile 22. How many miles out are we? Well, Our angel can only stay on the ground 10 minutes. They miss that window, they are dead. Hey, you come to me and see kill us all? Is that the game today? I'll play. Everything I've seen made me everything I am. Pray. Fast forward, freeze frame on my pistol. Pray. You're chaos. I think I might be worse. I am a killer who looks like a hero. For you families out there, we have Christopher Robbins about the beloved character who reunites with his childhood friend, Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> you must be Madeline. Wait, you're the bearer of my father's drawings. Yes. Do you know where he is? I do. <laughs> Let's bounce! I just saw the most preposterous imposter. Look at him. If anyone wants to clap, now is the time to do it. Up next, Mila Kunis and Kate McKinnon star in the spoof, The Spy Who Dumped Me. An international terrorist group is planning a series of assassinations. A lot of innocent people are going to die unless we stop them. Will you trust us to help you? Light it up. This is surreal, and I honestly think I'm in shock. Woman, you are incredible, and I want you to own it. You have a real instinct for this. I do play a lot of video games. Last and possibly least is the sci-fi thriller, The Darkest Minds. Imprisoned by an adult world that now fears everyone under 18, a group of teens form a resistance group to fight back and reclaim control of their future. We don't have to stay in darkness. We've survived all of this. I will fight for all of us. That's it this week. I hope you had a great summer and we'll see you next year. Thanks, Mark. Now it's time for our next commercial break. Stick around. We'll be back with more comics, beer, and sci-fi. Stop what you're doing and come check out how we do things here at Able Ideas Comic Book Production Company. There we got your attention. Now go to our YouTube channel to subscribe and follow us on social media. Stay tuned for our uncensored DVD coming soon. And for more information, follow us at ableideas.com where your ideas come to life. Hey, did you hear we're doing another season? Excellent. Comic Spirit Sci-Fi crew, assemble. Maybe we better go get everybody. Okay, what about Richie? Don't worry, he's a little tight up. Okay, come on. Quiet. Atomic batteries, the power, turbine, the speed. I'm ready to go. Holy season three, Joe. Come on, we gotta go shoot. Oh, all right. Casey, come on, we got a show to do. Well, I'm doing my job. I'm reading comic books. Kellen, Kellen. Mark, what are you doing? Mon Dieu, I'm trying to observe the emotion of the maison scene. Move it, maestro. Okay. Hey, Nick, chill. Have a beer with the broadcast. We gotta shoot. Let's go. Come on, we don't have time for this. All right, okay. You want to watch TV or be on TV? Like you got to show it out when you Sam, come on, we have to film. No, hold on, I'm just kicking his butt. No! Nick! <laughs> well, it's great to have the gang all back. We're back for season three. Be sure to check us out on TV and social oh. media. Hi. Welcome back, thanks for watching. What time is it, Nick? It's beer 30, Jill. Hey, it's the Bradcast, and I am here in San Diego at Stone Brewery at Liberty Station. Standing next to me is Chris Ketchum. He is a brewer and innovator. How long you been doing this? At Liberty Station Brewery here for five years now. Wow. Uh, and I've been with Stone for almost 14 years. This is our satellite location, um, our second Stone World Bistro and Gardens, and then our other one's up in Escondido, where our main production facility is at. Tell me what it means to be an innovator. With the craft beer scene as it is now, there's a lot of awesome beers being put out. Part of being an innovator for me is just trying to create new styles or new variations of styles so people find different reasons to drink craft beer. 
there's endless wonders right now and there's so many creative people making beers and you know i'm lucky enough to be one of them so how many different innovations can you bring to life in this facility uh in this facility so we have a 10 barrel brew house and we have eight uh 20 barrel fermenters so at any given time we can have uh 160 barrels of fermentation space so that's a lot of beer yes, and there's eight different styles of beer and then we could take those and bring them down to even smaller scales and make different flavor profiles of beer. We're, we keep ourselves pretty busy here. We're making about like 2,000 barrels of beer a year out of this location. Is your beer the only beer served here? Uh, absolutely not, no. Uh, we have a lot of uh, San Diego breweries. We have 150 in San Diego. Wow. We try and promote their beers as much as we can as long as uh, they we enjoy their beers and making really good product. We want to showcase them here That's as well. Nice. We came in the back way and it's like, oh my God, this place is huge. And we walked and there was a room and then we walked and there was a room and we walked and it was, this is incredible. This is the largest restaurant in San Diego currently. Oh. Uh, we can see, I believe it's like 1500 people we can see in this restaurant. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. So it's also a very awesome destination. Um, this is Liberty Station as a whole. So, I mean, we've, we've been here for five years. We have the Liberty Station Public Market right next door, and they pull in a lot of people in there, and we got some really fantastic restaurants around here. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Yeah. It's, been, uh, it's, it's been a slice. <laughs> this has been the broadcast from Stone Brewery. Thanks. What's up next, Nick? Well, it's time for Comic Book Casey, who was in Boston recently visiting one of his favorite comic shops. Comic Book Casey coming at you from New England Comics in Harvard Square. We are in walking distance of the university itself. I feel a little smarter already, and I'm also getting uh, the help from Hannah, who runs the store here. She's making me a lot smarter when it comes to comic book curation. So, Hannah, why don't you tell us a little something about New England Comics? Hi, uh, I'm Hannah. I've worked at New England Comics for about 15 years or so. The store's been around for about 35 years. We've got seven locations in the Boston area. This is the fun location. I've come to this store... I think so, personally. I, I feel this is more intimate. Every store has their own personality, and part of it's the employees, part of it's the customers. So in Harvard Square, we have our own unique flavor. We have a store in Coolidge Corner, which is in Brookline. It's not that far away. Both of these stores are pretty similar, but very different from, say, our store in Brockton or Quincy. Let's talk about the classic comic books that you have been curating lately and collecting for the store. Uh, this is a collection I purchased recently from a woman who lives in Cambridge. She was actually an archaeologist, so she kept her comics the way you would expect an archaeologist to keep anything, which is extremely well. Most of her collection was from about 67 to 72, and you really don't see comics from this era in fine or better, but most of her comics were. You're pretty much in the comic book curation business now when you're collecting books of this nature these are all silver age primarily correct uh, yeah late silver silver age for the most part we're looking for silver age golden age and we pay the most for those comics newsflash i did buy a couple of these books a couple weeks ago when i was in town am i going to get a 50 percent discount i get a 50 percent discount and i had to work here for 10 years before i got it so no <laughs> unless you want to stay here for 10 years I, I could do that. I'll, I'll put a little air mattress right in that corner of the store, right over there, and I will stay here 10 years until you give me these books for 50% <laughs> off. If we still have them, you're welcome to it. I'll take the deal. <laughs> and now it's time for our Hollywood car segment with Joe Johnson. Hold on to your butts. This is Joe Johnson at the Telegraph Cruise, and I'm here with Keith, owner of this beautiful 94 Jeep Wrangler that might look familiar to anyone who's seen the Jurassic Park movies. You said when you bought this, you just wanted a Jeep. What made you convert it into a Jurassic Park Jeep? It was one of those because I can kind of moments. I am a gearhead. I have 17 cars total. I like to work on cars, and I wanted a Jeep. This is not a wrap. You painted this. You did the work. This is not a wrap. This is paint. This is the correct movie style LP1 low gloss sand beige metallic. That put me into the Jurassic Park motor pool of which now I'm actually the leader of the Michigan division. How many vehicles make up the Michigan Jurassic Park motor pool? Uh, we just got a new member so we are up to 13. Um, that's all vehicles in process or done or uh, tribute vehicles that aren't a Explorer Jeep, Mercedes, or RV. 
Just in the little while that we've been standing here in this parking lot, families and kids have been coming up, some of them wearing dinosaur t-shirts. Talk about the reaction you get when you take this out and, and family and kids reacting to it. Oh, everywhere. I can't take this thing to go get milk without getting pictures taken. And I love it. I consider Jurassic Park one of the greatest movies ever made, one of my all-time favorite movies. What role did Jurassic Park play in your life growing up? It is the furthest, earliest back memory that I have of any kind of love for dinosaurs. Jurassic Park just put that image in everyone's head of, oh, dinosaurs are really cool. Jurassic World, uh, Fallen Kingdom just came out. I assume you were in the theater to see that? We were actually in Branson, Missouri for the Jurassic Park Motor Pool World Meetup. There were 51 Jurassic Park vehicles there. And we had not only one theater, but the entire building to ourselves for a midnight screening of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Keith, thank you so much for sharing this with us. It's just a beautiful vehicle. You did great work on it. Makes me feel like a kid. From the Telegraph Cruise, I'm Joe Johnson for Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi. Thanks, Joe. Now it's time for our last commercial break. And we'll be back with more Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Comic Spirit and Sci-Fi, everybody. It's time for our cosplay segment with Casey. Yes! So we chatted with two video game cosplayers. Mm. Let's check it out. Okay. So I'm standing here with the God of War and... Sylvanas Windrunner. Okay, and what I want to ask you guys is how long have you been doing this? Uh, this is my second year. Sec two years doing this yeah. and running, right? Mm -hmm. So how long did it take you to make your costume? Uh, 150 hours, give or take. How long does it take you to get in full body paint to do this? It takes about three hours for her to paint me up. Oh, she paints you up. Yeah. So, sounds like a fun process. Sponge. With a sponge. With, with a little facial sponge. Okay, now are you both fans of the video game itself? Do you actually play the game or just like the characters? Love the game. Well, I got up through a Cataclysm before I had to give it up because it was way too much money, but you're looking at nearly 15 years of World of Warcraft with the new expansion here this summer. That is dedication. All right, well, thank you guys for coming out, and we appreciate you giving us some time to talk to you. These are awesome costumes. Hi, guys. This is Samantha with Comics Here and Sci-Fi, and I'm in San Diego Comic-Con, and we're at the Super Smash Brothers booth. We're going to talk to some gamers who played the new game. Tell me a little bit about the game. Was it worth the wait standing in line? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I really like the changes that I've seen so far. I really like edge guarding, and the changes to the mechanics make it a lot more effective, so I'm into that. Uh, it was an absolute blast. Uh, the the graphics are phenomenal, the game is super fun. Oh, it was awesome, I love Smash Brothers and the fact that we have all the characters together, it's it's a dream come true. Pretty awesome so far, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm a big Nintendo fan, so I gotta love everything they do. A lot of characters got like, you know, changes, like every single one of them, and they're being utilized here. If you take first, get a pin, so it's fun. What character did you use? Mega Man. 30th anniversary, you gotta get it. What was your favorite character that you used? Uh, I used Samus, but she didn't win tonight, but it's all right. So did you win? Uh, not this time. No. <laughs> Next time. That looks like such a blast. I can't wait to play this game myself.
This has been Samantha with Comics Here and Sci-Fi. Happy gaming. Hey guys, before we go to our last segment, we have an announcement to make. That's right. Even though this is the last regular episode of Season 3, we're going to be back for the next two weeks with a couple more Greatest Hits episodes. Give you a chance to catch up on some of our interviews we've done in the last couple years. So don't despair. There's still more comics, beer, and sci-fi to come. That's right. And next, we're going to go to Richie with this week's home video picks. Welcome to the final episode, the final segment of Season 3, Home Video Releases. I can't believe another season is coming to an end. And we got to deal with the death of Superman. I hope it's fake news. I really do. We need you, Clark. Hold back, or he'll kill everyone. I don't know where you came from, but I'm sending you back. You can't go back after that thing. It's suicide. I have to get back to work. This city needs me. Come on, Rollins. Pull yourself together, man. You can do this. <sighs> Next up is Archie Jughead, Veronica and Betty in Riverdale season two, now on Blu-ray and DVD. Came out of the bathroom and there was this man wearing this hood with a gun and popped in and then he pointed it at my dad and fired. And then he... And then he what? For a moment it looked like you were about to say something about the hood guy and you reconsidered. Really? Part of what makes you so endearing is your utter lack of a poker fist. Me and my dad were witnesses, Pop Tate too. What if he comes back? People have grudges. People have enemies. I mean, think of where we live. Fathers are killing their sons. It's entirely conceivable this was a hit. Well, thanks for another great year. Uh, season three is wrapping up, as you know, and that means I'm not gonna be on TV for in the next few months. And well, I just wanna say I'm gonna miss you guys so much. And thanks for watching and, and Jill, just shut up! I'm not gonna wrap it up, okay? The pies are so hard! Thanks, Richie. Pull yourself together, man. Hey, Nick, I hear there's another movie you can watch from the comfort of your couch? Yes, Jill. As a matter of fact, in a moment of shameless self-promotion, I wanted to announce that uh, the co-creator and director of Comic Experience Sci-Fi, Denver Roshan, and I collaborated on an independent film a few years back called The Haunted Heart, A Paranormal Love Story, and it is now available on YouTube to watch for free. It's definitely indie. It's definitely low budget, but... I think you'll enjoy it if you stick with it, especially if you watch it a couple more times. It gets better with each viewing. And gets better with each beer, too, huh? Thanks, Nick. I can't wait to check that out. Well, that's it for this time, guys. Don't forget to stay tuned in next week for our first ever Best Of show. See you next time. Thanks, everybody. 